Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. And um, so the last of the group that I'm recording today. Uh, this wine I bought a, a little while ago. And um, I bought it because of the label. No, it's not my wine, even though it's my initials. Um, I was like, man, there's a wine with my initials. So another wine I had to buy because of what I saw in the label. This is the MF Carneros Pinot Noir Napa Valley 2009. So what does MF stand for? Shut up. It stands for Matthew Fritz. Um, so what it is, and I had to look again on the website because I hadn't finished reading everything on it. Um, you have two gentlemen by the name of Matt Bonanno and Fritz Stuhlmuller. Um, they created, uh, they joined forces, as the website says, to create a wine called Matthew Fritz. Um, and what they, I'll just kind of do the about, uh, consistently delivering premium wines from top-notch Appalachians at outstanding prices, Matt and Fritz leverage their access to inside offerings, wine expertise, and wine producing capabilities to consistently provide superior market opportunities. Okay, some great marketing fluff. Basically what they're saying is, these two guys know a lot of people, uh, they're pretty smart, they know, they know a little bit about wine, and they want to go out and make some great wine at a great price. All right? Okay. So, um, oh, um, so it's Pinot Noir, 100% Pinot Noir, first of all, that's kind of significant here. Um, but one thing about this, and, and, and I mentioned in the last episode, I had to check on something, um, just because I, I wasn't exactly sure of some percentages. And it was more just for making sure I knew before I said something that I had to look it up. But um, 87% of... Um, someone just did a tweet to me. Anyway, um, I'll look at that in just a second here. 87% um, of the Pinot Noir comes from the Carneros in Napa Valley. The other 13% comes from the Sonoma Coast. And that's what I was looking up as far as... Um, Uh huh. Okay, now I got to see what this little review is. Wow. Okay, I, I'll I'll look at that later. It's a bunch of big conversation uh, between uh, the owner of the company that hosts Zippy Kid, by the way, that hosts my uh, website and somebody else talking about doing a wine review. Anyway, um, so something about uh, about American wine laws and California wine laws um, to have the AVA for California to use the AVA, the grapes have to be harvested. 85% um, of the grapes have to be harvested in that particular appellation. Um, and is it 80, so with 87%, uh, 87%, oops, battery ran out. One of the few times that we've had to do that. Now, I did look to see where I left off, and um, so I don't have to start over. Luckily, we hadn't really started tasting anything. But anyway, um, all right, so American wine laws, blah, 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 87%. Okay, so it has to be 85% has to come from the AVA to call to carry that AVA. So since 87% came from Carneros, you can call it a Carneros Pinot Noir. That's a California thing. Okay, let's get right into this. All right, pale color. Uh, I give it a ruby clear, and uh, thought it was aromatic. It, it's somewhat youthful smelling. It's a little more fruit forward than an earthiness, um, which it should be since the 2009. I do get a bit of cherry. That was right about where I was about to start getting into uh, aroma. So I didn't, hadn't gone too far. I just noticed the red light was gone. 
Hint, if you don't hear the little bleep for a ZI-8 when you start recording, that means the battery must be going low because that's what happened. I didn't hear, I didn't, the last couple ones I did, I didn't hear the little, um, I didn't hear the little, the little tone when you start recording. So we have it plugged into the wall. Uh, a bit of cherry. And I'm going to change my aroma intensity to, to moderate. Um, I'm really not getting that much at all. Matter of fact, I'm going to change it all the way to low. Um, I think what it was is when it poured it right out of the bottle, um, it had a, a strong aroma, and now it's just really kind of very subtle. Do you have the red line on my forehead from the... I don't know, a bit of cherry, and I don't know, maybe all of a sudden I had a thought of like a, uh, how do I put it, like a, an eatery, bar-ish type of, you know, like, like a pizza, like a pizza, not a pizza joint, but a, like a place that sells, you know, that makes pizza, a pizza restaurant of some sort. I mean, in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I would think of um, this place called Julian's here in San Antonio. I'm gonna say they probably have the second best pizza in town. They're like they like kind of neck and neck with with um, uh, now I can't remember the other place <laughs> who has the best wine in San Antonio. Um, Florio's. And the reason I talk about that is there's there's a bit of there's a hint of wood to it. So it's kind of like you, you walk into the restaurant, you got kind of the pizza smell and a little bit of the, the they got some wood, like they got some like um, wood boxes around. Uh, and so that the type of aromas that you get from that. But uh, I got the cherries and, and, and a little bit of like wood. All right, let's, uh, which I wasn't really expecting, um, we'll say minerality. More than wood. Let's taste it. Well, I'm going to say um, it's a bit off dry, light bodied. I, I circled fresh for the acidity. Uh, low tannins, soft. Let's go to the last one of the day. I'm going to swallow a little bit. I see it's got some good balance. Flavor intensity moderate. I wouldn't necessarily expect a Pinot Noir to like completely just overwhelm you. Um, again, I guess I get the cherries. Um, it's really light. You know, it's very light tasting. Um, even though it's about a medium finish, like like it, it's there, but I don't get, I don't get a whole lot out of it. Now, let's see what they say. I guess maybe maybe I'm getting yeah vanilla a little bit. Let's let's just read their notes. Brilliant ruby red in color. Okay, uh, complex nose of raspberry, strawberry, and black cherry with a hint of vanilla. In. Fresh spicy fruit flavors characterize the mouth with red fruit notes appearing on the palate joined by hints of spice, cinnamon, and earth. Hmm. Power suggestion sometimes helps out. So, on the nose, nothing different than what I've said before.
I'm going to go with spice, yes. I think that's, there was something I wasn't really keying in on, but spice, yes. Uh, do I have anything specifically cinnamon? No. Do I get any, a lot of earth? No. Um, but all in all, I mean, it's a $10 bottle of wine. $10 light, easy drinking Pinot Noir. I've had other Pinot Noirs I think I've liked better, but it's not a bad wine. Um, if I was going to, you know, for a score, I'm going to say, um, did I score? Oh, I skipped a couple pages back. But, um, I give it an 87. You know, I think it's a solid wine. I think there's nothing wrong with it. I think um, if you want, if you're looking for another Pinot Noir to try out that's a little different, um, I don't think it's like a, I don't want to say classic, you know, California Pinot Noir, but um, I think it's different than some of the other Pinot Noirs I've had from California. Uh, and that's what I like about it. Um, the other thing is it's 100% Pinot Noir, so you know it doesn't have Syrah or anything else in there to beef it up. So anyway, um, they suggest $15 for the retail price. You can get it for $10 at Central Market in HEB, um, maybe even for a dollar or two less at your local discount wine shop or liquor store, um, if it's being sold there. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say not buy it. Um, it's a recommend. I recommend to buy it if you find it. Check it out. I mean, come on. It can't be bad. It's got my initials on it. Ooh, that might be the thumbnail. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see. That's going to do it for today. Uh, which means the next couple weeks I don't have to record any wine reviews. That might mean that I've already recorded a sommelier score. Shocking. Shock of shock of shocks. I might have recorded a sommelier score in the, over the next couple weeks somewhere. Check it out. It's 6 o'clock Central Time on June 22nd. I know that the... Um, the end of this episode is probably like July sometime. But that means there's a Gold Cup game to watch for soccer. U.S. Men's National Team. USMNT for the hashtag. And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to get this stuff loaded up on the computer upstairs. Uh, we're going to be playing with Final Cut Pro 10. And um, watching some uh, soccer or football. Have a good one.